<laughs> cynical, Dr. Eisen. Nobody, I don't think, uh, nobody could uh, vote for the current administration with gas at $3 a gallon. Uh, anyway, uh, I don't know how to proceed with this. There's so much in the Gospels, actually, to uh, point out that it's just physically impossible for such a, such a vast sea of material. So I'm going to do two different ways here. You see how important the harmony is, or the, uh, you know, the synopsis, the having the things in column. And without that, you just can't proceed at all in working, because you just be turning back and forth till you get dizzy. And you'll never find the parallels anyway. By the time you find them, you forget what you're looking for. <laughs> so you need both. You need the straight narrative line and the parallels. So I've got them both here in front of me. That's why I assigned you both kinds of books. You know, I want to make you into professionals, not amateurs. And if you don't buy the books, it's on your own head, not mine. But in these kinds of things, it doesn't pay to, uh, shall we use a cool word, skimp. In these kinds of things, skip the next time you go down and have a beer at some sports bar or something like that. For the price of what you pay there, you can buy one of these books. So, you know, you're just wasting money in those places. What do you get out of that? You know, two hours, and then it's, you got to do it all over again. So, uh, you know, the book lasts your whole life, and all what you put in the book is your whole lifetime. So, uh, since you're interested in this subject, buy what I assign you. You'll be, you, you'll, you'll be happy to have those things. They, they will not be, uh, they will not be, um, without use to you. I only assigned you things that I feel were great use to me. So, and having the Greek uh, parallel underneath with English, I mean, okay, you don't understand all the Greek, but so as you get used to it, you will understand some of the Greek, and then you'll be able to see the word repeating itself. You'll be able to see, does that say hypocrisia in Greek, or doesn't it? Uh, or has uh, some translator messed around with that word? So he's obscured the meaning. So these are the things you 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 don't need to know the whole gospel in Greek, obviously. Most of the words are easily you know translatable, so there's no question. Now he went here. You need a you need another Greek for that? No, of course not. You only know not the important words like works, hypocrisy, things like that. And that you can you can find righteousness and so on. All right, so. I'm going to pick up with uh, with Matthew and try to use Matthew. I want to get up to these sections. I mean, I'm going to keep skipping around. Um, Matthew, to me, is the most plausible gospel to follow, normally speaking. Uh, but I'm going to skip the Sermon on the Mount, which is very famous for, from five to seven. Uh, we, we'll see if we have time. To treat, uh, to treat that some other time, ending up with things like, uh, look at 545. You have heard, uh, uh, love your neighbor, hate your enemy, but I say love your enemies. Well, that's um, pushing it beyond where the Dead Sea Scrolls and the Royal Law of Scripture and James go. And James, you only have love your neighbor, the righteousness command. Loving your enemy pushes it into an area where, well, that's right, admirable. You know, I've never seen any Christian really do it, but uh, I've seen some try, but the rank and file don't, don't even try. So I mean, it's very admirable, but it's, I, I think in the political context here, it's meant to you know, calm down about the Roman Empire. Now, um, you can see it as a more spiritual thing. In that case, try to do the impossible. Love, love your enemy, and I don't think you'll succeed very well, but I'm not a preacher, so I'm not going to, uh, I'm just trying to, uh, why I tend to see these things in polemical, political situations, you don't have to disagree. If you do disagree, that's fine. I mean, um, you see it as a spiritual recommendation, practice it, go ahead. Uh, uh, I'm not going to practice it. Uh, that's it. Because <laughs> I don't think it's, uh, again, I don't think it's an authentic saying of, of uh, Jesus. Uh, it may be an authentic saying of the Messiah portrayed here. So that's what I mean. If you, you stop at each one, you're going to have a lot of trouble here. 
Uh, I said, you love your enemies. Bless those that curse you. <laughs> yeah, do good. I'm going to um, bless Hitler. I'm going to do good to Hitler. No, 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 I'm not. I believe in righteousness. And, uh, you know, this is where we, we come uh, This is where the gauntlet goes down. I'm going to do good to Nero. This is, uh, I'm going to do good to Vespasian. I'm going to do good to Titus. I'm going to do good to the Alexandrian anti-Semites. No, I'm not going to try to harm them unnecessarily, but I'm not going to love them. So this is uh, the difference in Palestine. This is not Palestinian messianism. It may be Jesus' messianism, and that's your savior. That may be. Then you'll have to decide, did that savior walk around in Palestine? And if he did, then why is that room misunderstanding? In any event, I don't want to uh, get hung up on those are preaching questions and spiritual questions that each person has to answer for him or herself. Uh, but here we have, he sends uh, his son to rise on evil good, he sends rain on the just and the unjust. Um, for if you love those who love you with reward, you do the same. Do not the tax collectors do the same? Always this um, publicans, tax collectors imagery, as if um, they matter in some way. They don't matter in Palestine at all. They're disliked and they are representatives of Roman Herodian power. So again, it's okay for overseas to uh, speak like this, but tell conquered uh, Britain, tell conquered Gaul about these kinds of things. You have to put this in historical context and see what the aim of the people writing these things, Jesus or some others in his name, may be. Most people don't understand that it could be written in Jesus' name and may not even be his, which is the whole object of the historical Jesus. I don't have the answer to that. You are the only one who can answer that. Therefore, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. The perfection ideal is right through the scrolls. The scrolls call themselves walkers in the way of, of perfection. That does come from the Dead Sea Scrolls in the sense that that's an ideal of the scrolls, uh, to be perfect in every way. So there we now come back to a scroll idea. And there's another one here. Rain on the unjust and just alike in the uh, war scroll from Qumran. Um, you get the star prophecy in Qumran. Column 11, which ends in the Messiah, interpretation of the Messiah, coming on the clouds of heaven with the heavenly host for final eschatological judgment on all mankind. And it ends with the image of uh, pouring rain uh, on all that grows on earth, meaning pouring rain, eschatological, final rain, rain like judgment on all that grows on earth, on the just and unjust alike. So that's another one that parallels war scroll imagery. So I can tell you that may not have anything to do with it. I'll just note, note, note it up for you that there it is. 